Welcome back to Dino's Garage for the next installment of the K100 project. Now, I've got the tank off and it's on the bench here in the garage. Um, I've emptied it of all of its old, stinky, smelly, old, disgusting fuel. Um, there were quite a few bits of stuff in there, but the beauty of these aluminium tanks is they don't rust from the inside. Now you have got to be careful, you've got the fuel pump in there that the seals are still in good condition. Um, it looks fine in there other than a little bit of debris, but like I say there's no corrosion inside this aluminium tank. So what am I doing? Well I've removed the heat shield that was stuck to the underside of this. Um, so basically what I need to do now is look at stripping this tank down relieving it of its old and tired paint to get it down to really bare uh, aluminium. Um, what I also need to do, and we'll bring the camera in and have a closer look now. So what I also need to do is remove these sections here. Now it might look like, you know, you have a seam and it's welded up to here and it might look like if you were to cut this that actually you're breaking into the skin between the two welds and then you end up with a, a hole or a slot down here where this is sort of webbed into. And that isn't the case. This bit here is actually an, an, almost an extra piece of metal that can be cut away very gently and I will cut it from the inside so I'm going to have to remove this this fuel hose um, but using a small Dremel I can cut this very gently through run it to the welded seam here so we have a nice line and then I can always just file any sharp edges off um, then we'll be looking to spray this with some paint stripper so I shall lay this down on a piece of board spray it over a paint stripper let that work itself in so hopefully by the end of the day We'll have a, a nice pure aluminium looking tank. So I've cut the first web off of this side as you can see. So that would have been attached to there. Something like this. That's been cut off. I'm about to cut this other one this side. And you really need to be using a Dremel type tool for this. It needs to be a really small circumference because you've got... this radius part here you won't do it with a big blade you have to have a tiny little blade and just come round into this section so I'm cutting it from the inside out and I'll show you that and I'll show you why so you can see the weld line and then you can cut just on the outside edge of that so but I'm like I say I'm going to be using this Dremel tool now and I'm just going to be cutting through like this and you need this Dremel to be able to get into that radius there and then cut through again to the outside edge here. So let's get cutting now. So now I've just got to tidy up these corners, little sharp corner there, just trim that a little and also just take off a little part of that weld there just to try and bring that line a bit neater. To be honest this side's been cut a lot easier and going quite well whereas this other side I need to remove a little bit more. I'll show you that in a second but just going to get on and tidy this up now. There. This could really do with being cut a little bit more just to give a bit more of a curve. You can see that we've got this kind of nice line running up here and then it just goes a bit too straight line to this point because it really needs a little trim. Um, but the, the weld is on that back edge and I'm not sure that I could trim much off of that. It would be a bit tricky to trim it. Best way to remove these, um, plastic tool, this will basically get underneath there but it won't damage the aluminium and then some heat. 
one so I can get in underneath a bit. There you go. She will peel off. Simple as that. Now she's ready for stripping. Well, I say now, I've just got to seal that cap, the top part of the tank here. What I'll probably do is get a piece of cardboard or something like that um, and just use the original screws for the fuel cap and just seal this off just so I don't accidentally spray any paint stripper inside the tank because um, we want to actually make sure we get rid of all the paint around this edge so I just need to go right down into this bottom lip here seal something in there then I can strip all the paint off the whole tank so paint stripping I'm using this Autotech paint stripper in a can as you can see uh, gonna give it a good shake spray it all over and hopefully when I come back it'll be bubbling up already So, it's um, been about half an hour really, I've gone away and had dinner, but you can see that it has bubbled up some and I'll be able to scrape some off, but I basically need to uh, get on and spray some more and let that work in as well. So that top black coat coming off really easy. It's soft, which is nice, so it's absorbed the paint stripper, making it really easy for me to scrape them off. Initially I thought I was going to have trouble with this, but I thought only the bubbled part was going to come off and the other bit was going to be still quite hard. find something else to scrape this off with I think or put a bit of tape on there because that's quite a useful thing so where are we with the tank well I've stripped pretty much all of the paint off the tank now using paint stripper and wire brushes and and sort of little things like that I'll show you what I used in a minute um, now what I would say is the paint stripper that I used initially was great on that first sort of black coat of paint but as it got down to some of the base coats some of the acid etch primer that's on this tank it really didn't touch it it was you know hard work to remove that so I used you know layer after layer of that paint stripper and was very patient waiting for it to work itself in there but yeah it wasn't wasn't strong enough and wasn't really that great at, at getting into that paint so the things that I've used, um, this is a brass wire brush, um, brass being softer than steel, it doesn't scratch the aluminium, it just really gets in and helps you remove some of that flaking paint. Um, this is a really actually a, a really sort of well used one and it's pretty much flat now as you work in it pushes those wires out, out to each side and it's pretty much had its day. Um, the other things I've been using are these little wire cup brushes. Now, what I do have is like a Dremel, um, just a cheaper brand, and these are steel wire ones. 
and same in brass this is like a sort of chimney sweep type brush really good for getting into little details linear details coming around I'll show you in a minute how I can remove some of the paint around here um, and then the cup ones which are good really just to cover a little bit more surface area along the top of the tank and places like that um, places like this still need to be done like I say I'll show you that now and just see how well that works Still got all this paint in here that I need to remove so I'm going to do it like this So there we are that's all of that area cleaned up now and as I've shown you using that Dremel type tool with those little what I call chimney sweep type brushes those flat disc like ones you can really get in and remove the paint from all those difficult areas now I just want to show you something because you've probably noticed this already which is a little bit of the elephant in the room so to speak is the damage to this tank now it has at some point received a blow here just near where the emblem goes now I did notice when I was stripping the bike down from that uh, original footage uh, uh, video or so ago um, that this didn't feel right didn't look right and in fact it's obviously had this hit here and dented it which is a real shame because although there's filler here it's actually got this area just near where the BMW badge goes where it's still pushed in a little bit now you can put all the filler you like in there but you, you can't obviously fill that area where it's just depressed into this point I'll show you it from another angle show you what I mean but what I'm so the bit I'm talking about is this bit here um, like I say it's had this blow and it's forced this in and we're going to need to figure out a way really of just pushing that out and then I can come in and feel after and get that shape perfect because you know we're going to go to all this trouble of getting this paintwork absolutely beautiful and getting this bike looking fantastic I don't want to come back and look at this and go I oh, wish I'd done something with that and really got that right before we ever started painting. So try as I have to um, knock this dent out, I've even taken this little hammer and I can put it inside and just gently tap. The problem is with the tubes inside I then can't get enough swing to actually hit that little dent out. So I'm going to leave that dent, um, we'll get that filler sorted and then like I say I'll get this cleaned up now and uh, we'll prep it for painting but And so there it is, that's the tank stripped of all of its paint. I've washed it down and just sort of gone over with it with a sort of Brillo type pad 
and some clean soapy water. Um, the other thing I need to do before I sort of prep this for proper painting is get this other side filled so we get that little indentation sorted because unfortunately try as I did to come in from this side and tap it out or push it out the the aluminium is just too thick and too strong and that dent is too old to flex back into shape so I'm gonna to have to live with it um, through fear of other otherwise damaging it a little bit more than I want to so I'm gonna fill that get that all prepped and smoothed off and then we'll be able to look at getting some paint down on this tank so yeah as always thanks for watching Dino's Garage and thanks for your support and uh, there will be other videos to do with the K100 project and who knows what other bike is around the corner thanks for watching